Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again, and let me go ahead and preface this by saying there's going to be a bunch of moving parts, so there might be some mistakes being made, and even then, there was still more stuff that I wanted to put in here, but I, I kind of ran out of time, and like I said, this is probably going to be a fairly long cast anyway, so, um, but let me go ahead and intro this music, not not really appropriate for this cast but it's what I've been listening to all night and I don't really have an interest in any other except maybe one I'll talk more about that later but but uh, anyway this is gonna be Song of a Forlorn Kingdom by Visions of Nifton so, some uh I think technically it's dungeon synth but a lot of this actually sounds like Minecraft so well that'd be kind of interesting Sound test this. Yeah, I can hardly hear it from my end. Okay, so, so to start with, um, yesterday, um, did my pinball stream and I did fucking wonderful. Oh my god, so nice. I mean, just made most of my shots. Um, I even managed to beat a couple of high scores. I think one of the tables, get away too. It's it's a table that I'd be lucky to have broken into the top five. I think I only did that one time. Um, up, but up until yet, but it, hang on. Sorry, I'm a little little too excited right now. But like I said, it's I haven't done this good in a very long time. Um. Last week, notwithstanding, I think last week, I think towards the end of the session, I just royally suck. It's like, it's like the bottom dropped out on my playing skill or something. Um, this time around, I started to fizzle out towards the end, but I think it was also because I was approaching my cutoff because I still had a bunch of, uh, I still had a bunch of other stuff I had to get taken care of. So, but, I mean, otherwise, otherwise it was so great, so great to have a good session like this for once. Just, you know, made most of my shots. Um, I was at least competent on most of the tables. Um, the tournaments I did on FX3, I pretty much sucked ass. But most of the scores on there were just extremely high. Like, I must not have been the only one that knew what I was doing. Like, a lot of other players in these tournaments, they're also doing good as well. So... Yeah, that's pretty quiet. So, but I'm really, you know, I'm really hoping to have more sessions like this. Because it, it was also one of the reasons why I used to stream pinball twice a week. I had to knock it down to once a week. It's just, the frustration was just getting too unbearable. And was all, it was also burning me out. So, I... I reduced it to like once a week and even then it wasn't always a full commitment like sometimes I just record a one hour session and just upload it so. um but otherwise another thing I did worked on my taxes finally got them done and surprisingly it it actually went pretty quick and painless. Just just like yeah, last year, and one of the reasons why I actually uh I actually remembered to like all of my info, my name, my address, phone number, etc. I just saved all that information on notepad. I'm not I'm not real comfortable doing it, just operational security. Sorry if that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, this time around I just took all of last year's uh, tax info, I, I did this last year too. It was last year, all of my all of my info, you know, taxes, last year's federal taxable income or whatever, you gotta have that, and, and the, uh, the PIN number, we have to have that now. But all of that I saved on my notepad, but again, not, not really comfortable doing that, because 
I'd rather have the information in my head and just feel safer, but also, it's just, I mean, despite the fact that I only have to deal with this once a year, but that's like, that's gonna be like, I mean, that's like a lot of BS you gotta, you gotta deal with. So, it's, it's one day you're never gonna get back. So, but, uh, on, on top of that, though, oh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. But, anyway, um, but, federal, I'm getting back 50 bucks. Uh, not too bad. Um, the cost, I think the, the cost of, uh, filing it electronically is like like either 14 or 17 bucks so I am getting some money back um state however one dollar that's not a typo that's all I'm getting one dollar so but I just went ahead and took that one dollar and applied it to next year's to next year's taxes now now, the property tax, the one that really does matter, um, this time around, I'm actually getting a grand back. So, and I'm thinking the reason why, I usually, usually I only get like maybe 500 back. And I don't, I don't know if it's like this in the rest of the country, but um, here in Minnesota, or at least in my neck of the woods, um, renters do get a, renters can a, uh, can claim property tax and like like I've been doing usually I get around five six hundred bucks back this time around I'm getting a grand and I'm thinking it's due to me uh, going to part-time I I think I went to part-time like I want to say February of last year so um I think last year last year I made like 30 32 grand this year I only made 22 so, because of that, though, I think that's why I'm getting more back. I'm getting almost twice as much. Which is good, because uh, that's definitely going to sustain me here for the next three or so months. So, I just, I just got to hold on and stay strong until July or August, which is when you usually get them, the property taxes back. But, but yeah, like, like, like I said, I don't, know, I don't know how it is in other, other parts of the country, but here... Um, renters, people that you know rent apartments, you can um, you can claim a property tax refund. So I, no other place I can think of that I've lived in, that I've lived in over the years, you could do that. I know uh, when I was li when I had an apartment in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, you couldn't. You know, renters couldn't claim property tax down in Oklahoma, so. So this is a new thing for me. Or, let me rephrase. It's a new-ish thing for me. See, you know, you just... As whitey as it might sound... You know, and I, I get that... I get that you can always... You can always roll over your refund to next year. It just... It seems like an awful lot of work when all you're getting back is one dollar. I mean, it's not even worth filing then. You know, and 50 bucks from federal is actually pretty good, but there's been times where I've probably gotten back like 10, 20 bucks. You know, and I'm, you can kind of do it, you can kind of do it, like do like a quick calculation of how much of a refund you're going to get. I kind of wish they could write in the law. Like if you're getting... If you're gonna get less than ten, if you're gonna get less than ten dollars back as a refund, you don't need to file. But is, but to my knowledge, you gotta file anyway, even if you're getting one dollar back. You know, because like I said, the only one, I, the only one I really, really care about is the property tax. Because like I said, I'm getting five to six hundred, or as of this year, I'm getting a thousand back. So yeah, uh, 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 yeah, I'm definitely gonna file that. Like I said, that's that money there is gonna help keep, you know help me stay on part time for the next 
few months. So, but um, kind of moving along here. Um, I actually, I um, I listened to most of the uh, Morrowind soundtrack yesterday. Um, for those that don't know, yesterday's cast, I was playing uh, Ash Can, and uh, the YouTube comment saying this music was very heavily Morrowind influenced. So I went and gave Morrowind a listen. I'm like, huh? I don't get it. A lot of it is just high fantasy, you know, neoclassical music. I didn't hear any ash can in there. So. And uh, I actually, I was gonna, I was actually gonna, gonna play Morrowind music during my cast. Uh, either that or on Minecraft. And I did a copyright test on both of them. It actually kind of surprised me. I figured, um, Morrowind less so. It's a more obscure game than Minecraft. I was actually expecting, when I did the copyright test on Minecraft, I was actually expecting, like, YouTube to, YouTube to respond with, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Minecraft's a popular game. <laughs> of course it's going to have, of course the music's going to be copyrighted. <laughs> You silly fool! <laughs> but no, um, only I think only one single song out of that whole two-hour video was was copyrighted. Everything else on there was safe. But it, it, I think um, I think that song was like probably like in the middle, in the middle of that uh, video somewhere. But even then, if even if even paranoid as it might, might sound, if even if one single song on that on that album is copyrighted, I'm still not going to play it. And it's the same thing with Morrowind. I did a copyright test on it. Oh, for those that don't know what I what I mean, it's, it, it's a new uh, technique that I learned here a few days ago. If you want to find out if an album is copyrighted, like on YouTube, download it. Like, um, I use, it's called Y2Mate. Um, download it with that, and then immediately re-upload it and then just then wait for YouTube to give you a yay or nay and then once you find out what it, you know if whether or not you got the green light then just delete the, delete the upload afterwards so I started doing that um and it's it's been a help so far but um going back going back to Morrowind um I was expecting like just uh, like probably like the entire I mean it's a fairly popular game, not as popular as Minecraft, but I think there's been a, I think I've watched a few AGDQ speedruns on the game, so it's gotta be pretty po fairly popular. So I was expecting like the whole entire soundtrack to be copyrighted. Nope. I think only one track, only one track on there was copyrighted. Like, I think it was like the very, very first one, but again, parano it might sound paranoid, but even if there's one track that's copyrighted, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna edit that one out and play the rest or anything like that. And then there's something else I just thought of too. There was, I don't, I don't remember. It was, I think it was yesterday or the day before, but there was a, there was a video. I started listening to it, but then I read the description and it said, the opening track has been removed due to copyright. I'm like no man, no. He, I mean, you play the whole entire album. You play all of it or none of it. I mean, imagine what would, imagine what would happen if somebody, if somebody uploaded Led Zeppelin IV, but then took out Stairway to Heaven because it was copyrighted. I mean, not much, not much of a fucking album after that. Okay, I gotta, I gotta do something real quick. I think I might have forgotten. To. Okay, I gotta set the uh, album to loop because it's only like a 15-minute album. You know, but I mean, but I've I've encountered videos like that over the years. You know, you think you're listening to this full-fledged album, and you look at the description: tracks one and three were removed due to copyright. It, it's it's not a damn album that. You know what? You know, once again, to, I mean, it's like uploading Jimi Hendrix's "Are You Experienced" album, but. Deleting Purple Haze, Hey Joe, and The Wind Cries Mary because they're copyrighted. I mean, it, it's not even, 
You shouldn't even bother uploading the damn thing to begin with, then. You know, the aforementioned Led Zeppelin 4, I mean, Stairway to Heaven is one of the most legendary songs of all time. And you're going to remove that one because of copyright? I mean, that's pretty much, that, that song there is pretty much the reason why everybody got that album to begin with. I mean, they ain't going to care about when the levy breaks, even though, even though I hear the, the first sound, the, the first part of that. You know, the very first part of that song. I hear that sample quite a bit. But I mean, aside from that, the rest of the album, nobody really gives a shit about. So. So yeah, but again, it, it's kind of why when it comes to something like the Minecraft soundtrack or the Morrowind soundtrack or pretty much any other album, I'm going to play the entire thing or not at all. You know, I don't want to put somebody else through what I've gone through. But I got to move along. Like I said, I still have a fair amount to talk about. Um, and one, uh, one thing that did come up on my uh, YouTube recommendations. This, this was my green crystal right here. This is pretty much this, this is pretty much the video that got me into fighting games. Um, it's, it was by uh, a channel called the Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Pretty popular back in like the mid to late 2010s. I don't. I think he's been very, very sporadic with his content of uh, recently. Uh, but it, it was there. Um, YouTube recommendations. I started watching it, and I'm. And a lot of the a lot of the things that I now like about fighting games. Eh, I'm starting to like nod my head. I'm like, okay, yeah. Yeah, I totally get it now, Cosmo. Because at the time, I was what, you know, a couple, two, two and a half years ago, I was just watching this during my lunch break at work. So I had a different mentality like back then. A lot of, probably like a lot of other people, um, I was fighting games are too hard. Uh, I think I just, I also remembered back around that time, I still had Street Fighter 4. And every once in a while, I'd go on it, try to do a, Try to do a fireball motion, you know, down to forward and then a punch button. Uh, uh, uh. You know, I had probably like a a one and three, you know, one and three attempts were successful. This is th that was pretty much my routine. If I got a hankering for it, go on Street Fighter Four, pick pick Ryu, see if I can do that damn Hadouken fireball. Um, like I said, like a 33% chance. You know, do that. Get frustrated, say fuck it, and quit. I mean, it, it's kind of, it kind of what happens when you watch a whole bunch of uh, Evo tournament videos, you know, or Evo tournament footage, watching all those great players. Infiltration. Um, Justin Wong, PR Balrog. I'm trying to think of some other names. Um... Uh, Ricky Ortiz. Um, uh, come on, there's got to be more. Um, show those all day. It, at that time, it sounded like he was a pretty popular tournament player. But like I said, I can't... I can't really think of any others, but, you know, just the creme de la creme, watching all them play. You know, sitting here doing all these special moves, seemingly at will. You know, sometimes those games, those matches were like bullet hell matches. Just sugar bush, sugar bush, sugar bush, sugar bush. You know, just shooting high and low fireballs and all that, and big old flying uppercuts all over. You know, flying uppercuts everywhere. And just you know, and then I go on Street Fighter Four, and it's like, eh, I can't even do one. So yeah. And then there's the um problem I had back in the 90s. Oh, and um, I forgot to mention at the start of this that for those that have seen my other cast, yeah, I'm probably going to be repeating myself here, so and um, I'm going to take another drink of uh, Arizona green tea. Hold on. So, 
But um, but yeah, the first part, probably the first half of this video was just was just Cosmo talking about what got him into fighting games, which no, I can really relate to. And again, this is like a two, like two, two and a half years ago. You know, just sitting there on my lunch break, probably just probably having a crappy day at work. I mean, hell, now that I think about it, right when I first saw the appeal of fighting games, I was probably... <laughs> oh, try me. <laughs> sure. You know, and then... You know, because again, I'm coming from the, you know, I was playing them back in the 90s where a lot of the people back then were on fucking power trips. You know, um, I'd be playing by myself again. I think it was Mortal Kombat 2 was one of them. Killer Instinct might have been another. But yeah, I'd have some some guy standing behind me watching me play. But then I'd start struggling against the computer. He starts kicking my butt. Then the asshole comes in and pops in his quarters and then, you know, jumps into place. And then beats my ass worse than the computer ever could. You know, freaking dude, you know, freaking douchebag. But. So it just, so, you know, I had all this going into watching this video. Like, why? So I too could be a power tripping asshole? You know. I think Henry Rollins once said, the only time, the only time people know anything about power is when they hold it over someone else. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, seen my fair share of that over the years. So, but anyway, um, Anyway, kind of moving along here, um, but he got to a part, he got to a little part in the video where he mentioned Broly Lakes. Right when I saw that, I went and checked out part of his documentary, and I'm like, okay, there, there is no excuse for me to not at least try. You know, again, probably like lots of other people, I wasn't, wasn't much of a fan of fighting games. So, but after, but after seeing that, after seeing that documentary, I, you know, I'm going to have to try this again. Um, and one other thing I need to, po need to post up. I just now remembered, I forgot to do it. take a little bit. No, not the brightest. And sorry about this, folks. But like I said, um, those that have seen my other cast, excuse me, those that have seen my other cast, this is gonna be, this is gonna sound pretty familiar to you. I think one of the reasons why is this music. Right when I, right when I heard this album, I mean, hang on, let me rewind a bit. Right when, I, when I heard this album, all this stuff immediately came up. So, but anyway, after seeing the documentary, um, shortly after, my YouTube algorithm kicked in and Core A Gaming videos started popping up. Started watching them. I was like, holy shit. Like, man, I wish this stuff was around back in the 90s. You know, I, cause, I mean, to be fair, back when I was playing them, the internet, either it didn't exist or it was only in its infancy. So, so the, some of the some of the power tripping, you know, the assholery that I had to contend with, or I gotta I gotta rewind even farther. Um, it, it, to be fair, 
I only had this ha I've only had this happen like twice twice that I can think of but it they're they're pretty traumatic for lack of a better word so I mean there there are situations that I don't there are situations that I don't want to don't want to get involved in again um those that have seen my um seen my uh, fighting game tier list the twitch video the twitch version I think uh time killers was one of my one of my all-time favorite uh, fighting games back then because nobody else played it um but I don't I I don't want to go too de in depth in here because it's it's been 25 minutes already so if I talked about that I could this video could easily stretch to an hour so but anyway like I was saying um so I started watching a lot of these core a gaming videos and really helpful I mean it's it's like fighting games for dummies it's what it is so it and it was around that time I think first game I picked up was fantasy strike mechanically I, I still love the game mechanically aesthetically I can't stand it it's it just in many in so many different ways I'll just say I'll just say that um, then it went into foot. I'm trying to think. I want to say footsies, but I think something else came before it. I can't remember what, but anyway. But that, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much what got me started on fighting games. And then, oh God. And then at some point, I can't remember when, I think it was probably like a few months ago, um, another video I saw, because um, I was uh, fighting the game, motion inputs, the video explained exactly my situation with these. Some of the harder, the hard to, the hard to execute moves, it, it, that's, it's exactly what I was feeling when I, you know, when I was playing Street Fighter 4. It felt more like I was fighting the damn game than it was fighting my opponent. And to this day, sometimes I still have that issue. It's why sometimes I'll still play, uh, I'll still do, uh, easy mode on Guilty Gear Rev 2. I'll have, um, sometimes I'll have stylish, you know, stylish mode. You know, it does like, uh, auto combos, one button specials, auto blocking. Although, all I want out of it is the one button specials. I don't really need the auto combos. I can figure those out on my own. And auto blocking, I'm almost embarrassed whenever that kicks in. So, but anyway, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. But but anyway, um. But after having a, but, but, but looking, you know, watching this video now, like I said, it, I totally understood what he was getting at. I mean, not, not everything. I mean, I've never done tournaments before. But a lot of the other things that he talks about, I'm like, okay, yeah, there we go. You know, because once again, I, at the time I watched, when I watched the video for the first time, I was like, it's just basically one man's story. You know, I'm sure, I, I still kind of believe it to this day, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's videos of old ladies knitting blankets. They probably have the same kind of, they probably have the same kind of journey that Cosmo did, the same kind that I did. So, I mean, our journey, for lack of a better word, can be applied to most anything else in life. You know, martial arts. You know, um, underwater basket weaving. So, you know, but I, again, the, I only saw what's on the surface of this video. See, it's just one of those things that it didn't didn't really sink in until I actually started playing fighting games. So, oh, and I gotta back up. I gotta back up. I totally forgot to mention this. Um, 
I also looked into... I also looked into... Uh, DJ Screw suggested uh, I try uh, I try Skyrim. I did look into it, but statistically... Oh, uh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, but statistically, my computer can't run it. Um, or uh, let me rephrase that. My computer, kind of like, uh, kind of like Guilty Gear Strive, my computer can just barely run it. But which, what that also means, though, is, uh, streaming the game is a no-go. So for those that know me, I, with few exceptions, I don't like playing games unless I can stream them. So, um, I looked at Morrowind, um, my computer is quite capable of running it and streaming it, but, um, but on the other hand, too, when it comes to MMORPGs, I'm really not there anymore. So, I might download it, I might give it a go, like, like if I'm just not in the mood to play anything else or something. And uh, I think it only costs like $10, $15, pretty cheap. So that was the other issue too. Skyrim costs like $40. Now, if I don't like it, I can always turn it in and get a refund. And uh, I don't think uh, I don't think it's ever failed me. But again, I, when it comes to, if I gotta spend a lot of money on a game, I'm usually really skittish. Unlike uh, trying to try to ask for a refund if I don't like it, like the They'll say, sorry, sorry, Joe, this game is not refundable for insert reason here. You know, that kind of thing. So, but like, like I said, I'm, I'm mostly into fighting games and pinball once a week. Um, I might, again, I might, I might give Morrowind a go. I might give Morrowind a go. Like, maybe play it like once or twice or something. Again, it only costs 15 bucks, so... If I ask for a refund and they say it's non-refundable for whatever reason, then it's only fifteen dollars that I would have lost. So. Okay, so that's gonna do it for me. Okay, um, I was actually expecting this to be about fifteen twenty minutes, as silly as that might sound. Um. Actually, uh, I wasn't expecting to. I wasn't expecting to talk about taxes as long as I did. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting to talk about pinball as long as I did. I thought these are just going to be uh, quick recaps, but no, I kind of went over long on them. So, but otherwise, um, that's going to do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it good, and. And as always, thanks for listening. Uh, always appreciate it. And this is going to be my last one for the week. So my work week has started back up. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So you guys won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So Until then, thanks again for coming by. And see you all next time. Bye for now.